And welcome to Senator Adam Eben, who represents Virginia's 30th Senate District that comprises parts of Arlington, Alexandria, and Fairfax. Adam was first elected to the Senate in 2012, having served in the House of Delegates since 2004. His committee assignments include local government, as well as agriculture, conservation and natural resources, and the General Laws and Technology Committee. He is co-chair of the General Assembly's Progressive Caucus and a strong voice for cleaner energy, funding for mass transit improvements, and anti-discrimination protections. He has served as chair of the Virginia Commission on the Prevention of Human Trafficking and has passed important legislation to help end this little known scourge in our community. He is also an alumni of JCRC's Missions to Israel. Welcome. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you for having me tonight and thank you for your legislative agenda, which I embrace and um, am proud to be um, supportive of. Uh, before I begin, I wanted to send greetings from Eileen Fillercorn, one of uh, four members of the Jewish Caucus, who's at her daughter's school banquet tonight, and asked me to uh, send her regrets. Um, I also want to thank the community for supporting the constitutional amendment that we passed uh, just uh, earlier this month, uh, allowing the General Assembly to postpone uh, sessions that would otherwise meet on Passover or other holidays, which was um, nice after having to sit there when, when we could have been having a Seder. So that was uh, personally uh, satisfying to me. And um, I wanted to uh, uh, ask, uh, have you all heard about, I'm assuming you've all heard about the Affordable Care Act from uh, Delegates Hope and Delegate Scott, so I'm going to not uh, cover that. Um, and I, I figure what I would do is talk to you about some of uh, the bills that I intend to put in this session. I've had 12 uh, bills to make it easier to vote or um, make it easier to vote absentee, I should say, uh, that I've had drafted and I'll be putting in some of them, uh, in including um, uh, allowing people to have privacy when they apply for an absentee ballot, when they have their disability not to have to publicly disclose that. Uh, if they fail to show their middle name on their application, not to be disqualified from voting, and uh, with Senator John Miller uh, to uh, allow people over 65 years uh, of age to vote absentee without uh, further uh, explanation. Uh, in terms of um, seniors, uh, I want to see that they're notified of their right to return to nursing homes after a hospital stay. Uh, I want to see the generators are required for all nursing homes in Virginia. And uh, I want to work further on human trafficking. Um, we want to see that uh, victims of human trafficking uh, who are victims, which is the key word, uh, be able to have convictions of prostitution as minors erased from their records. Um, I have a constituent who um, actually uh, was fired from a job with the federal government because she'd been trafficked uh, in another state. And we don't want that to happen again. Uh, along with Delegate Vivian Watts, we're looking into legislation that would allow uh, victims to sue traffickers for civil, um, civil damages. And I, I also wanted to let you know that along with Senator Don McEachin, we will be putting in a perennial bill which had passed the Senate before to um, require non-discrimination policies in state employment, which has been held up in the House of Delegates. And on that same topic, uh, in 2012, we saw two actions which I thought were particularly disgraceful uh, from uh, the General Assembly. Uh, one from the House to turn away a qualified candidate uh, for a judgeship uh, based on a sexual orientation. Those who voted no will come up with a pretext, but he was turned away because he's gay. Uh, fortunately, the um, circuit court uh, did uh, install him as a general district court judge, which means we'll have a vote all over again, and hopefully not the same obstacles. Lastly, in 2012, the General Assembly made it uh, law in the code to, uh, to allow public funds for adoption agencies to go to adoption agencies that discriminate on any basis, uh, including on the basis of sexual orientation, which is seen as the primary reason of that bill. Um, and I'll just conclude on a happier note by saying that I'm looking forward to working with the JCRC to commemorate the uh, 65th anniversary of Israel in an appropriate way. Thanks for having us. Delegate Tim Hugo. 
Delegate Hugo served in the Virginia General Assembly since 2003. And uh, this is great about Northern Virginia. He's now the majority caucus leader for the Republican Party. So we like to have leaders on, on both sides and have them recognized from Northern Virginia. Uh, Delegate Hugo's uh, 40th district seat covers Centerville, southwestern portion of Fairfax, and adjoining Prince William County. And in addition to his leadership role, uh, Delegate Hugo is vice chair of the Finance Committee, serves on privileges, privileges and elections, transportation, commerce and labor committees. By profession, he works on technology issues at the federal level, and this is why we think he understands the critical role of the Virginia Israel Advisory Board and that they play in developing the Virginia technology sector and other key markets. And I say that because Delegate Hugo has uh, worked closely with the JCRC in recent years uh, on VIAB funding, which we thank you for, and now we look forward to hearing from you. Well, hey, well, well thank you very much. I I have worked with Debbie and Amy and, and Mel over the last two years on language that we put in the budget both years uh, regarding <coughs> VIA. And there's, there's a couple of things that I thought on that. Uh, one, I think that's a personal issue. I think that, and we see this every day and we see it exploding in the Middle East. I think the United States realizes that Israel is our only true ally in the Middle East. It's one of our great allies in the whole world, but our only true ally in the Middle East. But it is our true ally in the Middle East that is surrounded by countries who pledge to push it into the sea. And I just, I just find that uh, beyond the pale. And what I've said is whether it's on a federal level, on a state level, or on an individual personal level, I think we all have an obligation, economic, moral, and historical to, to support Israel. And I think in our little way, helping VIAB is something that I thought is important and, and will do. And we'll continue to work with Mel uh, and, and Amy and Deb to do. And so we'll continue with that. So thank you for. Thank you. We push that. We push that hard, and they're, they're like, "Why are you pushing this?" I said, "Because it's the right thing to do," and so we'll continue with that. The other thing, and, and, I, and Deb is reading your uh, issues, and I appreciate that. A couple of things we've already worked on. I mean, autism. You know, um, in the House, I was the deciding vote to get that out. Uh, that was being locked up in one of our committees. And again, when people came in, and one lady came in and said, "I have two children with autism, but I can only afford to take care of one. How do I pick?" Uh, kind of a Sophie's Choice, if you've ever seen that movie. And at that point, I said, you know, we've got to figure out something to help this. And, and we did that. And I'm glad that, you know, Virginia took the lead on that and is out there on that. Uh, Adam mentioned human trafficking. Uh, a couple years ago, I think you and I uh, worked on that committee, commission on that. And I think our bills were the only two bills that passed the whole General Assembly. Uh, next year, uh, we've already, I've already introduced another bill on that. Uh, it got tied up last year in the House. Uh, kind of unexpectedly. Uh, good thing about being the majority caucus chairman, uh, I'm going to make sure that passes this year uh, because I think that is something that is critically important. I did not know that Centerville in Northern Virginia was a hub for sex trafficking and human trafficking until about two years ago when Adam and I started working on this. So, I mean, this is something, and it's Centerville, which I represent. Um, it's something that we're going to continue to work on and that I will continue to work on and I think it's important. We've talked about, you know, all of these issues, and we, obviously we talked about uh, transportation and the general fund. There's decisions we're going to have to make. And, you know, we have a, probably a little bit of a different opinion on this, uh, general funds, but it's, it's something we've got to address as a commonwealth, and we've got to figure this out. In the next year, in the next beginning, the next month, $2 trillion in tax increases start at the federal level. Bush tax cuts expire, and then the president's health care bill starts to kick in in January. Uh, a friend of mine, he's a great guy, one of my best friends. He has a little bit different politics than me. He says, Tim, I'm a liberal Democrat. His job is to work to help to implement the president's health care bill. He has said point blank, we're not quite sure what we're going to do right now on this. They have to hire, because I said, well, tell me what's going on. Republicans say it's going to take 16,000 new employees. He said, no, 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 that's Republican BS. He goes, it's no more than 12,000 new employees. My point is, we've got a lot of unanswered questions on this that we've got to figure out. If we do the Medicaid, and I heard Debbie say that, it's a good issue. It's something we need to consider. But it's going to be $300 million. So we've got a lot of decisions. And I, I know he's, only, he's been here 38 years. I've only been at 10, so I get just like 15 extra seconds. <laughs> we've got a lot of extra decisions that we have to make, and we have to make all this fit in 
with federal at $2 trillion coming starting January of this year. And then we've got to figure out how do we fit it. Do we fit in Medicaid next to 300 million? Do we fit in all these things? Maybe do we raise taxes? There's decisions that are gonna to have to be made. So anyway, the last thing I wanna say is something Dick said. And he said, Bill Howell's his friend. I hope you take away from this. You know, sometimes I, I worry, and I see, especially in the kids, I worry that they only understand what they see on TV. Actually, I'll tell you right, I say it in front of his back and I say it behind his back. Dick Sazzle is a good guy. We go and have a glass of wine. He likes Bill Howe. I just hope, a, I hope that never, when you see on MSNBC and when you see on Fox, that's not the way we think about each other. Sometimes, that, you know, those guys got to sell ads. I think we all try to work together to get things done. And I just hope you don't ever, you know, I know Fox is entertaining sometimes and MSN or MSNBC is entertaining, but really don't think that everybody up there is throwing stones at everybody every minute of the day. I tell you what, if you look at the votes, most of the votes are 95 to 5 and are, or 38 to 2 if they're on the Senate side, and most, a lot of them are regional. And there's just a few that are partisan. So I think most of the times, and if you look at these people up here, you know, I'm proud with different parties sometimes. I'm proud to work with them on areas that are common with common interests, and especially the areas that are important to the region. So anyway, thank you for having me here tonight. I'm glad to work with you. Look forward to working with you next year.